Okay, so we know this shoe. We've seen this shoe long before its official release date, which is still not here. That's on November 19th. I'm talking about the Air Jordan 1 Retro High Chicago Lost and Found for 2022. Now, if you caught my video for the women's exclusive Starfish, you know I went about that a little differently simply because it's a Jordan 1 High. We know what it looks like. We know the construction of that specific model. However, Jordan Brand did something a little bit different here and we will discuss that. But more importantly, they wanted to connect with consumers of the past and the present with that love of the Chicago One. I think they did that with the storytelling. However, did they lose good faith based on the exclusive access parameters that didn't seem to really be followed? We'll discuss that, but let's go ahead and get to how I choose to style this very coveted pair. Six fits total, please comment below your favorite. On the far left, black on black on black, the black women's Jordan brand turtleneck they sent over, the H&M hooded cardigan, and a slim pair of H&M slacks in black. In the middle, something extremely classic for the ladies. Listen, a crop white tank, super distressed denim pants to go along with the aged aesthetic of the Air Jordan 1 Lost and Found, and then a go-to leather jacket. That's right, this is the guest one I picked up from eBay last year. And on the right, the Warriors 2022 Championship snapback I cannot stop wearing. The women's Jordan brand oversized flight t-shirt in black. The minimal super distressed cardigan in the cream colorway. And another pair of distressed denim because I love my American Eagle denim. And yes, it's definitely to play up the fact that we have a more distressed and aged pair with the Jordan 1 lost and found. These are certainly more casual looks, so the next three will be a little bit more relaxed. On the far left, one of my favorite Jordan brand hoodies, the stacked logos. I picked this up from Champs a few years ago. And of course, the Burnt Moss Richie Lee Collection Ripstop Cargo Pants, one of my absolute favorites in the collection now. In the middle, this look is 100% athletic. So we have the Jordan brand half zip anorak. Now the print is actually elephant. Shout out to the Air Jordan 3. And then the Jordan brand joggers. I picked these up from eBay a few years ago, but they are very comfortable. One of my favorites. I just don't wear them enough. So they got some love and shine in this video. And finally, you all know I have nothing but love, respect, and admiration for my coach, Steve Kerr of the Golden State Warriors. So the Mitchell and Ness Bulls, Steve Kerr jersey in black with the pinstripes, the Richie Lee Collection cargo pants there in black. I'm wearing a size medium if you are curious. And then, of course, the Championship Warriors snapback. I surround my soul with the positivity. That's why I don't worry about the things that I don't see, yeah. These days I don't worry about much I think we should have some more fun I still dream about What's going on everybody? It's your girl TJ back. Another video on Talks with TJ. And thank you so much for tuning in to this video. I say it quite often. We've seen this pair. We've seen a lot of different pairs early. So not that this video will present anything insanely groundbreaking, but I appreciate you watching my take and just my thoughts on this specific model for the Air Jordan 1 Chicago Lost and Found. It's beautiful, it's amazing. If you're a fan of nostalgia, if you love the aged look with intention, you get that from the box to the paper to the receipt. like. That receipt, that was a really nice touch, Jordan Brand. I truly appreciate that. And if you read the write-up on Nike.com, then you know they went about this with such attention to detail. I mean, we have to applaud them on that. They studied the 1985 pairs. They paid attention to what care must go into handling a 1985. What does the actual leather look like? What does it look like on the collar? What does it look like on the toe? How does the tongue age? How does the midsole age? How does the outer sole age? They paid attention to every little intricate part of a Jordan 1 and then they made a point to replicate that but no two shoes are the same at least that's what we're told they're all a little bit different because the aging I don't care if you put two different shoes in the exact same condition in the same stock room in the same store they're not going to look exactly the same if you pull them out of the box and that's what the story is and if you've worked in a sneaker store it's very common for pairs to get lost I'm just going to throw that out there from having worked in one pairs will accidentally fall behind shelves they'll get misplaced because 
employees don't pay attention to where they're actually putting shoes. A number of things can happen and a shoe is really just lost and you're cleaning things up. Maybe you're rearranging the stock room and you find a pair and you're like, what is this? They said you could even have a mismatch box lid. That's what we have because the box lid doesn't fit like you see yeah no it doesn't fit so you could even have a box lid that isn't the same i appreciate that and you have a gym like it's really like you're stumbling upon something that is just an amazing surprise and that's how we would all probably feel right now think about this if you just walked into a store today 2022 and you're like hey i'm just really looking for you know a jordan one and the one that you maybe see on the wall they don't have but they just magically walk out with the chicago one yeah, you would be shocked too and not believe it and think like, is this a sick joke that's being played on me? But we feel uh, it's, it's kind of like you were back in those days. And that's what they wanted. Think about the young current generation right now. They have no idea what it is, half of them, to even go into a store or hunt down a pair going from store to store or developing a relationship maybe with the individual store owner of these mom and pop shops to be able to go in, speak with them, just discuss the culture, the community, build a relationship and secure your pair on every single drop date. Now, the irony is not lost that Nike has gone more direct to consumer. It cuts, it cuts out costs. The middleman isn't there. So you're not having to cut into your profit margin. Nike can be in more control. So they're cutting a lot of Nike accounts for those mom and pop shops. It does feel like part of the community is being removed. I will say that. I've seen a lot of you also share those sentiments online. And I think that's fair. I think that's honest and just in how a lot of us may feel. So it is ironic that this is based on you going into a, a smaller own establishment when a lot of these smaller establishments are losing their Nike accounts. And then if you put that with, you know, Yeezy and Adidas and that lost revenue to these shops, I mean, who knows what can happen to them over the next few years. I think that's something we will all be tuned into because the market's shifting. Things are changing as they always do, but what doesn't change is more than likely the love for an Air Jordan 1 Chicago. Now, is this sneaker of the year for me? Mm, that I don't know. I don't know about that there. Uh, I will say this, even if it is up there just based on, you know, everyone wanting this, the, you know, the coveted nature of this shoe, the exclusive access may knock it down a few pegs because people are upset about this. Nike came out and said, hey, this will go to those. You've taken L after L after L after L, and maybe those L's have added up to something you thought to have access. But as we've learned, and I've seen people also say online, I didn't necessarily take 20 L's on these Jordan ones or 20 L's, and I still had access. And I explicitly know people that have taken way more than 20 L's on just Jordan 1s and many other models on the sneakers app and they did not get access whatsoever. So to that point, if we put that on top of the exclusive access for the Kobe 6 Pro Tro Mamba Sita Sweet 16, you have some bitter consumers. I think that's fair, Nike. So maybe in the future, just come out and say, hey, we're gonna go ahead and surprise random accounts for uh, the sneakers app with access to a pair that so many of you would love to have. And I think just leave it at that. Sometimes less is more because it can backfire. And then it's like a whole PR thing and Olivia Pope is probably, you know, not available to go ahead and clean up every situation that everyone is facing. So go ahead and comment your thoughts below on not only the shoe, the outfit, the exclusive access, eh, that's a little bit, I guess, shaky in a lot of people's eyes. But then also, where does this rank in terms of releases for 2022 for you? I appreciate you tuning into this video. As always, act your age, not your shoe size. Peace.